Hey everyone, this is Landon with Viator DSP and I want to give you a quick demo of my redesigned BT Clipper. Okay, so here's how it looks now. It's basically a brand new project. Um, I just wanted to, you know, redo the clipping algorithm and do something a little more creative. So here's what it looks like. You've got a pre-tone, a clipper, and a post-tone, three different sections. Um, you can change the clipper type between hard clipping, soft clipping, and analog clipping. The analog clipper is based loosely on a diode clipping um, circuit and then hard and soft, you know, hard and soft clipping. And then we've got quality. So quality is going to be oversampling. Normal quality is going to be no oversampling and high quality is going to be eight times oversampling. Let's do just the clipping part for now. Um, we've got a sine wave with a volume of zero. And I just have it not going to the output so that we can see the meter. So if we pull up the drive, we're pushing more input into the clipping algorithm and you can see that it never goes above zero. So that's the drive. We've also got a ceiling, a mix and a trim and the ceiling is really useful. So let's say that the input wasn't coming in at zero. Let's say it was coming in at negative 18 which is a likely situation for a lot of people. A lot of people gain stage their audio to be at negative 18. So turn off. So we've got negative 18. And what we can do is if we turn it on and we clip it, you can see that it's gonna raise all the way up to zero. And we don't want that. We want it to basically clip and stay at the volume that it's actually at. So we need to lower the ceiling to negative 18. And now when we push into it, it shouldn't go above that negative 18, which it's not. So that's good. So you can move the ceiling and that'll move where it's being cut off at, which is really useful because now you don't need to, you know, do any extra input staging or anything like that. Okay. And then the mix and trim are pretty self-explanatory. The mix is going to be the mix between the dry input signal and the clip signal. And then the trim is going to be uh, a volume for the output of the clipper, just in case you do need to change the volume for whatever reason. You're probably not going to need to do that, but it's so easy to put in there, you know, might as well. While we're still on the sine wave i can show you the pre-tone and post-tone so the pre-tone and the post-tone are both mid-range parametric you know eq tone controls and they both have the same exact settings but because one is before the clipper and one is after the clipper they affect the clipping a little different the pre-tone is going to color the sound quite a bit without really changing the shape of the distortion curve and the post tone is going to color it almost the same way but it's also going to change the curve of the distortion tone quite a bit so let me show you that here so they're both on right now so let me raise the gain at a thousand hertz let's put it on wide uh, so yeah let me raise the gain at a thousand hertz on the pre-tone and you can see all it's really doing is pushing into it because it's getting louder not really doing much whenever you go negative yeah, on the pre-tone, when you push into it, it colors the sound and it kind of just drives the distortion more. But on the post-tone, we do the same thing. Let's make it wide. If we raise the gain, you can see ooh, a slight little curve right here. So let's drive it a little harder. Yeah, so that we got more distortion. So now we can see we got this nice, cool, asymmetric curve on both sides. And if we move the frequency around, you know, it'll... It'll shape it even more. If you change the width, it'll shape it. If you change uh, the gain, it will shape it, which is really cool. So it gives you this tonal option to shape the distortion, which is really nice. And then we can see, let's go back. Now that we know we have enough drive to shape it, let's try it on the, yeah, so the pre-tone isn't gonna actually shape it. It's just gonna push it into the clipper more, which could be useful, but I really like the shaping option that we have here. Yeah, cool. So that's what a sine wave. So let's go to a different instrument. Let's try it on drums. Okay, here's a little drum riff. All right, let's put the clipper on. So the soft setting is going to be the least amount of actual distorted sound, whereas the hard and analog are going to sound pretty distorted. Uh, let's put it on hard first. And what were the drums at? the loudness of about negative 3.9 let's just make it negative 4 
you can see this hard setting is very distorted. But if we go to the soft setting, it's a little more subtle. It's pretty nice. I think it fits these drums really well, especially the kick. It just sounds fatter and bigger. And what you could do, I really like the way it sounds right there, so let's try mixing it in. So we've got a lot more volume, but the meter didn't go above where it was at, which is really nice. So you can use this to raise the apparent loudness without clipping the, the meter. So that's my new redesigned BT Clipper. Hope you like it. I hope you try it out. Check out my other free plugins on my Patreon where you can download them completely for free at Viator DSP. If you're interested in plugin development, follow me on Twitch at Dr. Underscore Bruising where I live stream Juice plugin development on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5.30 Central Standard. Also, check me out on YouTube at Dr. Bruising. I've uploaded all of my live streams there. I've got other plugin demos and more stuff to come. All right, thanks. See ya.